Butler's line. Could this be a factor again tonight? Well, it could, and I, uh, I think uh, Nick Luck is going to go with, I would think he's going to go with the same setup he as he had last night, and if things don't go well, he'll, you'll probably see him switch those, that line around a little bit. And play is underway in this second game. Three out of five. Pass in front of the leaf net. Turnbull shot it off the boards. It bounces all the way back to Langevin. Then Pearson to the leaf blue line gets it handed right back. Goes to Langevin. Intercepted by Melrose. And then he was checked. Which Goring is up there. Turnbull shot it around on the boards. And it's there's going to be a penalty here from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. This is Stanley Cup 81. Barry Melrose for cross-checking, sitting in the penalty box, and that spells trouble for the Islanders, or for the Leafs, rather. The Islanders last night, three power play goals. And we're all set for the face-off. It's Trache out there with Bossy and Bourne. Then it's Pat Van and Stefan Pearson. The Islanders trying to strike quickly. The pass is knocked off to the board. Then it's Pat Van shot it back of the net. Bourne had to come out in front. Gets it again. Islanders with the man advantage. Pat Van goes to Pearson. Pearson shoots. Oh, that's just wide. Played around on the boards by Salming, and it goes down the ice. Pearson goes back for it. And he's back to the net. Islanders with a pass to Dennis Putfan. Putfan going down to center. Crosses the line, then had to go back again. Teammates were too far ahead of him. Now they try it again. Bourne shooting it in. Corner. Into the corner. Bossy went after it. Bossy comes up with a puck. Bossy gets it over to Pearson. Pearson for Trache. Then to Dennis Patvan. Over to Dennis Patvan again. There's the shot. It's right in front as Boschman has lost his stick. Now it's Trache. Over it goes. Pearson a shot and it's gloved and held onto by Bunny Larocque. Well, Chico, you played for this club for seven years. The power play by the Islanders has been devastating. Well, it has. I, everyone's got their own opinion on how to uh, stop a good power play, and I think you just have to force it a little bit. And, and the Leafs are still pulling their men back in. They're playing the top of the circle, and uh, it could work, but as even it's shown already, the Islanders are going to get a lot of good chances playing that way. Well, that's what Mike Nicklock had said, too. He said, we have to force, not let them set up for their power play. Get on them, and perhaps that'll result in a stray pass, or are we able to gain control? Luck was shot into the crowd. Faceoff will be back in the leaf zone. There's Mike Nicklock. One thing he said, we, you know, we have to bring up our level of play. Whether that's possible against the Islanders, I don't know. But uh, if we want it bad enough, we will come up with that effort tonight. Comes back to the blue line. Hewan giving it to Marini. Into the corner. That's Butch Goring back of the net. Left it for Marini. Marini trying to center it. Gillies is out in front of the net. There it is for Gillies. And it's shot to the blue line, but not out. And his pot fan keeps it in. Gillies has it. Gillies trying to come out in front of the net. The puck is loose. It's shot to the blue line and out. McEwen to Potvan. Potvan over here to Gillies. It's offside. How much time would Al Arbor spend in this power play in a practice, Chico? Uh, not all that much during regular practice. When he spends a lot of time is the morning of a game. Like this morning, I'm sure he worked at least each line five minutes working the puck around on a power play. And you can't get much out of Al. I asked him, you know, if he was worried about the guys being let down and he didn't know and I he's, he's his famous saying is play it by ear there we've got a score up there Gary isn't that something for Ooh. Minnesota North Star as soon as they got that first one under a belt watch out Bobby Smith Payne and McAdam for Minnesota Brad Park for the Bruins the Leafs clear the puck out and down the ice that's going to be icing as it Melrose is return Lormer touching it and it will be brought all the way back 
you know, defense uh, defensemen play such an important part as we look at Al Arbor, who was a defenseman in his heyday. But, you know, there's more to just taking the man out and, and defending in your zone. But I think they play a very important part offensively. You know, make the plays and the shots on net, especially keeping them low. Well, right, and uh, they've got they've got a perfect blend of defensemen. They've got they've got three real mobile offensive defensemen, uh, three defensive defensemen. They got a perfect blend, and on the power play, they'll use three guys on the point. Most most uh, teams would be happy to have two good guys on the point. The perfect uh, situation: one defensive defenseman, one offense, playing uh, as a unit. Exactly. Merrick, number eleven. Nystrom, twenty-three. Gary Howard, number eight. Hutt comes back to the blue line and out to center ice. Rennie Robert out there with Saddlebauer and Boost Boudreaux. Now the Islanders. A pass. Longerton gets it up to Nystrom. Nystrom, a pass over the line. And the Islanders were changing. They try to get it up front, and it's picked off by Bunny LaRock. Well, again, that line for the Islanders caused some damage. But there's Boost Brudrill. Not in the lineup last night, but playing tonight. We also have Dave Farish scratch from tonight's game. He suffered a knee injury. Pat Hickey and Rocky Saganuk are also scratched from tonight's game. All set to go. That's Henning out there now. Number 10 is Juggle. Bossy was right in front of that net. The Buffalo Sabres have moved out in front of Vancouver in the first period. A goal by Hayworth. Remember, he was the, the goal scorer in sudden death overtime last night. Clark Gillies, uh, it's always interesting to see how he's going to play. You just never know if he's going to really be into it or what's going to spark him. But as you know, when he gets into it, he's one of the most dominating forces on the ice. Goring Gillies on the forward line. Up for Bill Derlego. He shot it into the corner. Gillies in the Islander zone. And then also they pile in there with Langevin. Get a whistle. There was certainly a lot of concern by the Leafs. The way Gillies handled himself in front of the net, they just could not budge him out of there. And you know what impressed me about the Islanders a few years ago when he used to stand in front of the net? What they used to do is put their defensemen ahead of the screener and try to block the shots. That's a planned play, you know, that we worked on. Derlego gets it back to Melrose. His shot knocked down. Goes over to Ian Turnbull. He lets one go and Smith stopped that. Angevin gets it up on the right side. It's cleared in by number 29, Hector Marini. And Goring got a shot with his weight. And it goes to Ian Turnbull. Turnbull's pass at center is going down the ice, but it was playable, so there's no ice. Now it's Butch Goring for Gillies, and they're going to change immediately. Daryl Sittler over the line. Melrose is shot high off the glass. Kept in by number 10, John Anderson. And a shot right on, and Smith covers up. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. So the Leafs have indeed changed lines. They have Sittler playing with Zanuzzi and Anderson playing against Trotje's line. So we'll have to watch that line matchup. And Sittler had the draw, but it gets out past Selming, and he had to go back and get it. He shot it in via delayed whistle. Potvain had it knocked out. Now he brings it out himself the second time and shot it too far for Bossy. And if the Leafs player gets to it, then he does. It's icing. I've always wondered, uh, Chico, has Dennis Potvin really played to his potential since he's been in the National Hockey League? Well, with his vast amount of talent, it's really hard to say. All I know is Denny has not had a good year. He hasn't been happy with this year. He's looking for to the playoffs to sort of redeem himself and get something out of this year. And it's going to be interesting to see uh, his level of play because it can fluctuate greatly. Dennis Potvin. 
Long pass up for Bossy, and it goes to Trache. Trache to Bourne. Bourne is hooked and knocked down. There's going to be a leaf penalty. They're second in a row. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Borea Salming in the penalty box on a hook. The Leafs are trying to stand up on that blue line and challenging. But when you have the likes of a Bobby Bourne who has that tremendous speed, that was the only way that Salming was able to stop him. So the Islanders again on the power play. No score in the game. As the puck goes back. Islander territory. 15 minutes and 7 seconds remaining in the first period. No score. Now here come the Islanders up over the line for Bossy. Bossy was given a bump. And Bourne has to go back for it. Number 14. Pearson's got it now. Pearson gets over the line to Bob Bourne. Bob Bourne takes his shot and it's deflected wide. Melrose clearing it. And it was knocked the rest of the way down the ice by Lori Boschman, who is now being replaced. On the face up is Trache shooting the puck in. It goes over for. Here's right in front for Bossy. It's shot. And Trache just failed to put it in the net. And they cleared the, the puck down the ice. Gary Martin goes up to do some forechecking. Person left it there. And that was a shot by Pema. Islanders coming up. Bossy and Dennis Petfarn up there. Gary Martin a shot. And Smith stopped there as the Islanders running into each other. Now it's what's Goring over the line. Too far for Clark Gilly. Chopped down the ice. Well, the Leafs are certainly challenging the Islanders more in this power play, not giving them a chance to set up in their own zone. McEwen, a pass to Goring. Goring gets away from Boudreaux. Over the line, tries to break through. The puck is still there. And it's finally whistled out. Well, we have a big game at the Forum in Montreal where the Oilers last night won their first game. Let's hear from Danny Gallivan. There's no score. First period, 14 minutes and 40 seconds of time remaining. There's Coffee in over the line. Coffee whipping that shot in over the left shoulder of goaltender 70. An unassisted goal by rookie defenseman Paul Coffey. The Oilers lead the Canadians one to nothing. 13:32 remaining in this first period here at the Coliseum. No score. Ten seconds left in Salming's penalty. Long shot ends up in the corner. Juris tried to get it out and couldn't. Marini. Gets it back to Lorimer, and it's offside. It hopped over his stick. He shot it back in again. With the score, Toronto nothing, Islanders nothing. This is Stanley Cup 81. Hey, Al got his new suit on tonight. Didn't look too worried. Pretty loose before the game, but the way the Islanders have started, I would think you would be a little concerned. They've been very sloppy, and the Leafs have really been taking advantage, looking good. Melrose shot the puck down. Picked up by McEwen. McEwen of the Islanders. A pass intercepted by Turnbull. He in turn was checked by Lowermore. And the Leaf promptly shoot the puck right back in again. McEwen heading it up all the way to center ice. Now it's batted down by Carroll. Carroll took a hit. Henning is out there with him and also Bossy. So Bossy's playing on two lines. Getting lots of ice time. Huck goes out to center ice. McEwen again. Right out of Settlebauer's stick. Settlebauer was poke checked by Lauren Henney. Goes in and around on the board. Settlebauer has it. Gives it to Ian Turnbull. Turnbull down the ice over the line. Gets his shot away and it's up into the crowd. Well, assistant coach Lauren Henning is in the lineup tonight. John Tonelli had the ankle injury, so he is not in. Goaltender Erie Sira. What about his effort last night? Oh, I thought it was a good effort, and uh, he seems like the type of goalie that bounces back well. And I think if we see him 
you know, farther on in the series, it's not going to affect him because he could be he could be pretty proud. He was sharp last night, but he just didn't seem to get the breaks, and I know what that's like. You, you sooner do. be lucky than good some nights, Gary. Absolutely right. Early go out there with five, and Dan Maloney, the Islanders have the puck. Pearson up to Gillies. Gillies fans on it. Now it's Langevin back for Gillies. He's tripped. Now a clearing pass out again, and it's Butch Goring for Marini, and that's offside. Dan Maloney, also assistant coach. And Marini having a few words. Well, you wondered if the Leafs would try to change their tactics and provide a little muscle. A few of the plays have certainly indicated that. But I don't know. I, I don't think the Islanders can be intimidated. No, that's a nice play, though, only because uh, Danny finished the playoff, and that's what you want to see, as you know, that little extra effort, just finishing everything off, just making the Islanders think a little bit. Ricky Vive shot it out over the line. It's cleared back by Maloney. Juris stopped by Pearson, and the puck is knocked right back into the leaf zone, and Salming will try his luck. Juris. Back to Salmi. Salming up at center. A little skating room. And he hit Gillies and it's offside. Well, the Leafs have certainly had some uh, time to make their plays for their defensemen. And they're controlling the puck pretty good at this stage. Well, an update on the out-of-town scores. Savard has got the second goal for Buffalo. And Butler has scored for Vancouver. Sabres still lead. Bill Barber, a veteran of that hockey club, has scored for Flyers. They lead the Nordiques in the first period, one to nothing. And here at the Nassau Coliseum, there's no score with 11 minutes and 26 seconds remaining to play in the first period. Puck goes back to Juris. Juris, number 24, back pass to Salming. Salming shoots it in. Goes around on the board. They jam there, it comes out. Juris goes to Salming. Salming shoots the puck in. Maloney goes after it. He missed it. They have it against the boards. Carroll. And now it's Pearson over the line to Gillies. Gillies shoots. It's right in the door. Oh, it, it was right in the goal crease. And then the net came off. Oh, LaRock made the original save, and then the puck just lying there. But Stefan Pearson, he can he can let it go. Makes a good drop pass to Gillies this time. High shot. And that can hurt. That can hurt there. You Bunny was moving his arm a little bit afterwards. And Clarky does that. I, I you know I've told him shoot a couple high and then keep that puck down because I know goalies, I know myself. I was afraid of his shot. And if he gets you on your heels and then fires a low one, you got big trouble. You know, we all often talk about the teams out shooting other teams, but is shots really an indicator? That's, you know, you yourself a goaltender. Do you worry about the number of shots that are against you? Well, last night Toronto got 41 shots, and except for the first period, I don't think they were indicative of the play, so I don't really like them unless they make a goalie look good and they don't, so I don't like them. <laughs> that goes into the corner. Timbo. Giving it to Anderson. Anderson. West Sittler and Zanussi over the line. Got it back of the net. Comes along the board. Puck bank can't get it out. Zanussi is covered by Wayne Merrick. And then Puck bank gets into it and they get a whistle. Hockey night in Canada will continue in a moment. We're back live here at the Nassau Coliseum. Preparing for a face-off in the Islanders' territory. And it goes to Dennis Putfan. Putfan. Clearing it over. Cleared out. By Ken Morrow. Shot down into the... Merrick goes after it in Leaf territory. Shot along the boards. And Uzi gave it to Sittler. Sittler coming down with John Anderson over the line. And his pass intended for Turnbull just missed. Melrose stepped into Merrick. Dennis Putfang gets in over the line. Takes his shot. 
And Nystrom couldn't get the rebound. Now then Moore will try it again over to Putfan. Ahead for Merritt. Nystrom stepped into Shand. Now it's up at center ice for Lori Barshman over the line. A shot. Met that no trouble with that uh, Martin stick. Then Piemont is knocked down, trying to get it out in front. And there's Bossy clearing it for Bourne. And it was into the crowd and out. Well, something that the Leafs talked about, Nick Luck was saying, we have to challenge at that blue line. They're doing an excellent job. But here, Pot Van certainly makes a, a fool out of a few of the Leafs, and he has done that to a few players. Yeah, fortunately there, he had a little tunnel vision. Bobby Nyshen was wide open on the right wing, and, and Denny, I guess, after making all those moves, was a little dizzy, and he didn't see his winger open. But uh, actually, the Leafs had four guys maybe just a little over anxious and actually moved by Denny a little too quick. Yeah, you have to take him. If you try to stick check him. Puck slides around on the board. Frache after it. Gets it to Bourne. Out for Bossy. And Bossy just failed to get through. Leafs come right back. Boschman knocked it over the line. And it's chopped right back to center right. Selming shoots it. And it goes into the crowd. Well, a guy that was the first star of last night's game. Five-point night. Brian Trotje, but he does everything so well. Oh, terrific. And, and his attitude is what makes it so special. And he's got the special attitude with uh, Mike Bossy, which really makes the whole thing click. And I've always looked at Brian as the leader and the really the most important guy, a Daryl Sittler of the Islanders. The puck is cleared over to Shan. Shan turns back to Selming, a shot. Another one right in front. Flip went down, Trache to Bossy, and Bossy just clears it down the ice. Tell me. A pass for Shan. Shan shoots the puck in. 8.31 remaining in the first period. There's no score in the game. Now then the Islanders. McKillen to Gillies. Gillies is over the line. Drops it on the right wing. There's the shot, and that was just wide. McKillen. He takes the backhand right down to Turnbull's stick. Play is called, and we have penalties. Live from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, the Stanley Cup playoffs. Now Clark Gillies and uh, Barry Melrose had quite a battle going in front of the net. Both received two-minute penalties for high sticking. Now it's Lungevin coming up to the leaf line, tried to go all the way, went down, and the Shan got a piece of him. The Leafs come back, a long pass at center ice, and the Islanders then recover in their own zone. Billy Carroll, number 25, gets the puck. Gets it back to Pearson. Pearson comes up to center ice. Clearing pass over on the right wing to Carroll. Carroll shoots it in. The Rock stops it back of the net. Chan. Clearing pass over on the wing to Turnbull. Turnbull for Robert. And it's shot out by the Islanders. Chan. Bears it down the ice. Benjamin to Carroll. Carroll gives it to Lauren Henning, who shot it in. Ends up in the corner. Islanders changing. Five is given up. But Derligo tries to get loose. Derligo goes in with a shot, and he was taken out of the play by Morrow. Now Bob Nystrom leaves it back to the net. Morrow for Dennis Putfan. He couldn't get out. Here's a pass for Vive, and it slides to Boya Salming. That goes into the corner. Back of the net for Bye. Bye trying to center it. Puck fan watching him. The puck rolls out to center right. 6.26 to go in the first period. No score in the game. Now it's Morrow. To Dennis Patfan. A pass up for Nystrom and Ed Derlego gets it. Derlego, Bye over the line. A drop pass. Zoning with one fly and it comes all the way out to Nystrom. Nice from and Gillies as the teams return to full strength. 
Here moving up is Butch Goring. Going, going back of the net. And he tried to set up Gillies. Thai brings it back. To Durlego and the Islanders break that up. Five minutes, 50 seconds to go in the first period. No score in the game. Game two. Crutchy couldn't get loose. Bossy takes his shot. The Rock knocked it off to the side. And now the Leafs. Here's Sittler trying to get away. Hook from behind. There's going to be a penalty to the Islanders when play stops. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Islanders penalty to number four. Bob. Box on the... On the hook against Daryl Sittler. You'll see Sittler trying to break out of his own zone, and there's Lorimer making contact. So what about the penalty killing of the Islanders? Do they challenge? I think they do, yeah. I think they're real aggressive. They try to be. They go for the shorthanded goals as they did last night. Bob Bourne couldn't get the puck out. Pimo was covered. The Islanders still fight for it, but Pimo's got it in the corner. Pimo to Daryl Sittler. Over to Salmi. There's the shot. That's knocked down as Pimo just about got the rebound. Now it's Sittler. Goes back to Salmi. Back to Sittler. He takes a shot. That was blocked. And it's played by the Islanders off the ankle of Salmi out to center ice. Rene Robert to Salmi. Salmi's pass was nowhere near Pimo. Cleared down the ice by Langevin to center. Now Selming comes back again. They're offside. On Settlebauer going in too quickly. Well, we have an update from Boston. Terry O'Reilly has scored the second goal for the Bruins and has narrowed the Minnesota lead. Now three to two in the second period. Butch killed a lot of penalties over the years, did it for L.A., now doing it for the Islanders. Uh, not particularly quick or strong, but real smart out there killing penalties. You know the tendency, of course, when you have the man advantage, you figure when a team gets possession at shorthand, they're just going to ice it. They don't expect you to go offensively, and that's the time you can really take advantage of that way of thinking and get those shorthanded goals. The Islanders have shot the puck down the ice. Rene Robert with it, number 14. One minute exactly remaining in the penalty. Shot by Salmi in. Smith snapped it, and Potvin gets it and then shoots it down the ice. We had mentioned yesterday's telecast that after about the 10-minute mark, the snow really develops on this ice surface, and you'll find the team shooting that puck in a lot more than carrying it in. And we've noticed that. Goring and Carroll are out there now. Potvin and Morrow. And it's cleared by Putt Fan right to Turnbull. Turnbull. 25 seconds left in the penalty to Laura Murr and no score in the game. It's Morrow. He shoots it out and down the ice as Goring was at center ice. He was in behind the Leaf defense, but it was too hard to handle. Gotcha knocks his man down. And hurt is Terry Mack. Back for McEwen. It comes up at center as the teams are back at full strength. Bourne went down. And Merrick couldn't control it. Morrow then for Angevin. Comes out to center ice. Wayne Merrick, he shoots it in. Going after it is Gary Howitt. Play is called. And there's going to be penalties, I believe. Did that look like a little bit of frustration? Because the Leafs are certainly making contact. They're taking the Islanders out at every opportunity. Laurie Boschman did a good job there. Gary Howe trying to forecheck strongly. Laurie, the secret is to get your body right on the guy you're trying to check. Then you can get the stick in there and hook a little bit, and the referee doesn't see it. And Laurie was doing that real effectively, and Gary took offense to it, turned around and made an obvious hit in the mouth, and uh, he's in the penalty box, and the Leafs have another chance for a power play. And they send out Daryl Sittler. And there you see 
Dennis Pat Fair. Al Arbor back to the bench. Well, we have certainly seen a higher level of play by the Leafs, but they've been making contact. They're checking a lot closer, but also trying to stop the Islanders from carrying that puck, and they've really stood up in that blue line, and they've broken up a lot of plays. Trache and Bourne are out there as the Islanders clear it back. Rene Robert trying to pick his way out, comes up through center. He blasted around on the board. Going into the board was Pat Van. Here's up to Selming. A shot. Missed that that. And it's cleared by Trache down the ice. Settlebauer was right in the thick of things. Standing in front of the net. Back for Daryl Sittler. Sittler shoots it in and goes into the corner. Oh, for Trache. That's broken up, comes back and goes past Settler down the ice. Gloria Salmon. The 206 remaining in the first period. No score in the game. 108 in the penalty. Settler coming to center. Gets it over to Robert. Robert makes a nice move, but it's offside Pemo. Well, tomorrow is traveling day for the teams, and the playoff picture resumes Saturday night. Buffalo will be at Vancouver. Viewers in BC, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Atlantic provinces. For those people in Ontario, you will see the Islanders at Maple Leaf Gardens. Bill Derlego, Rick Five, Dan Maloney, Robert, and Turnbull. Robert. Over to Turnbull. Turnbull shoots the puck in, it bounces. Glove by Smith into the corner, comes out in front, and the Islanders with Morrow having no trouble getting that puck down the ice. Turnbull to Robert. Robert is checked by Carroll. He goes back to Putt Fan. 32 seconds left in the penalty. Now Bob Bourne for Carroll. Carroll down over the line. Too well covered along the boards, and the Leafs come back. There they go. Up with five. Derlego tried to go to Maloney. Turnbull let the shot go, and Smith stopped that. Now Bob Bourne shoots it out to center ice. Nine seconds left in the penalty. Five over the line. Five still has it, and he's checked. Bob Bourne up for Howard. Howard was checked by Salming. Salming has lost his glove. Up for Wayne Merrick. Merrick missed a body check. Nice run. In over the line. And Zanussi shoots it out. Martin goes after it. But it's covered. By Pearson. Now it's in for Zanussi. That puck is deflected out over the line. And Salming brings it back in offside. Well, during our first intermission... Dave Hodge will have a look at the Canadian playoff recap, get the highlights so you have a chance to see those. And also, Dave and Chico will talk about power play, the Islander power play and what it's like playing against it. Two more goals in Philadelphia, Bridgman for the Flyers and Peter Stashny, who has had just a magnificent season. Two to one Flyer lead in the first. 22 seconds remain in this first period. No score. Seems oh. to have some kind of problem with that glass down there. Happens a lot here. Uh, I guess the, from what I've told from the building manager, the glass is old. They've had a new owner, new corporation take over the building. They're in the process of buying new glass. But I've seen uh, at least 25 35 pieces of glass break some of them falling on people and cutting them so it's really a dangerous situation be surprised what you can do with tape <laughs> well we've seen some good hits here tonight both teams have really decided to use the body Salming and Howitt having a little discussion there Gary's got a high voice. I didn't see anybody hit the glass, and maybe he yelled at uh, <laughs> at Boye, and he broke the glass. I don't know. 
Islanders <laughs> have possession of the puck. Comes over to Langevin. Langevin was knocked down. Merrick was bumped along the board as well. Now Stephen Pearson gets it to nice from right out in front. Now it could get a shot as the horn goes to end the first period. Well, I don't know who talked to the Leafs, but they... Buffalo still ahead of Vancouver. Savard and Hayworth, Butler for Vancouver. Bill Barber's second goal of the game has now given the Flyers a two-goal cushion in the second period. I'll set to set the second period. Pearson gets it over the line, but it's offside. Marini. A youngster that is just blessed with a lot of staying power. Very tough along the boards. Marini actually is in the lineup because of a few injuries to the Islanders. Keller is out right now, and he's taking his spot. But the guy is strong along the boards. Not the best skater in the world, but once he gets there, watch out. Marini, number 29, and that's Butch Goring and Clark Gillies. There they go. Vive and Dan Maloney. Harrison goes after the puck. Hit by Dan Maloney. Marini trying to get it loose. Got it up for Goring. Goring just shoots it to center ice. Cleared back by Harry Melrose. Puck is Langevin. Watched. It came out in front of the net. Now the Islanders overskate the puck. Marini and a shot. Smith cleared off to the side. Gillies gets it back to Langevin, then to Harrison, back to Langevin. Up through center, now he shoots it in. It's off the board, there's a shot by Marini Y. Howard tried to trap it, and it had too much steam and goes down the ice. And it's putt fan. He's back in the net. Clears a pass up to Marini. Marini left it there for Merrick. Merrick comes over the line. Into the corner, centered it right in front of the net, and Venusi comes up with it. Venusi for Sittler, broke it up by Nystrom, and shot right back in again. Howard ran into Bunny Leroy. Leafs get no further than center, and they get a whistle. From the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, this is Stanley Cup 81. Still no score here at the Island in the second period. We understand that Butch Goring has left for the Islander dressing room, and as soon as we get a report, we'll pass it on. Okay, Gary, and the puck can out to center ice. Picked up by Merrick. Merrick shoots the puck in. Honey Larocque trapped it. Howard tried to get to the puck. Sanuzzi shot it out to center ice. Cleared off the boards by Morrow. And Anderson gets it now for the Leafs. Anderson straight down the ice, over the line, a drop pass, and a collision there, Sittler and Dennis Patfa, and play ends. Well, how effective were the Leafs in that first period? Five shots for the Islanders, only three by the forwards. I mean, the Islanders looked disorganized out there. They didn't expect the Leafs to come out to eliminating that man. And the Leafs certainly have done that. A further update in Buffalo, Danny Gare has scored that third goal for the Sabres, now 3-1 to one in the second period. And of course there's no score here at the Nassau Coliseum with 17.59 remaining in the second period. Puck tip to center ice. Flavagiris to Anderson. Anderson couldn't get it over the line. The Islanders now with Treche. He hooks it over on the left wing. Bob Bourne over skates it. McEwen. Now then we have Trache mixing it up. Here's a pass over the line for Bourne. And Bourne bumps into Larock. It's knocked out the center. Here's the lead. Three on one. Boschman going in. Back to Anderson. Oh, and he passed it behind. Came on. Now the Islanders come back. Bossy takes his shot. Another shot. Knocked down behind the net. Trache up the board for Bourne. In for Trache again. Trache getting it over. 
It slides along the board. McKillen chopped at it and went over the glass. And Gary Dornheffer, that was a wasted pass. You know, you only get so many opportunities on a three-on-one break. That doesn't happen in a game that often. But let's watch the Leafs. I mean, this is awful. Anderson, you'll never get a better chance to shoot it from. Why make that extra pass? Especially when things aren't going well. If things are really clicking, you get fancy. But in a game where it's 0-0, things haven't been going well. I say you keep it basic, but it's easy, you know, to second guess up here. But uh, I just think, uh, you know, go for the sure thing and see what happens. You know, anytime there's a shot on net, if it doesn't go in, there's always that opportunity for a rebound. The Leafs had two guys already converging on the net. Yeah, I'm sure they'd like to have that one over. All set to go for the faceoff, number 25, Billy Carroll. Pearson shot it in, Turnbull tried to get it out. It shot off the boards and down the ice. Stopped by Pearson, Pearson. And now Marini to Clark Gillies, he's hooked. There's going to be a penalty to the Leafs. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Well, the, the Islanders broke out, but it was actually a two-on-two -two break. That's the time when you really don't want to take a penalty. Turnbull would have been better off just looking behind and picking up a trailer. That's right. Well, Clark isn't a great playmaker, so, you know, he's not going to go through two or three guys. McEwen to Potvin. Back to McEwen. McEwen to Potfan. The Islanders move up now with a man advantage. Over the line for Dennis Potfan. He stops. Takes a shot right in front. And Bunny LaRock went down and made a good save on that. There's another example, the value of a Dennis Potvan. How he, all it is is sliding the shot at the net. He sees his winger breaking, looking for the deflection. There at the left of your screen, heading for the net. The, per the perfect timing. LaRock actually makes this, this great play here by coming up with a save. I like what I'm seeing in Bunny tonight. He's got that special concentration going. He's looked real sharp. Dennis Potvin shoots one wide. It's into the corner, back of the net. Shot by the Leafs, but Whoa. not out. Carroll goes to the blue line to McEwen. McEwen. Takes his shot. He fired it wide. Dennis Patvan. He's checked, and Lori Boschman shoots the puck down the ice. Huck McEwen in for Clark Gilly. There's that forcing we talk about the Leafs. You know, there's a few giveaways. The Islanders throw the puck around the boards, kill off a lot of valuable seconds. Patvan up to center ice. Over the line, takes his shot, oh. and Bunny LaRock made a great save on that with his glove. Now Gillies. Puck is at the blue line, finally comes out. Dennis Puffin over for Bossy. Knocked over the line, Trotsky couldn't get near it. Comes all the way back out to Dennis Puffin. To Bossy. Now it's Pearson over the line. Four of them. It goes to Bourne. Bourne gets it back. He gets right in front. Takes his shot and he shot it wide. Trache was right after the side of the net. And the Leafs clear the puck down the ice. Lego goes after it, but Pearson beat him to it. A penalty is over. And the Leafs are back at full strength. Salming, getting it up to center right. Over the line for Vibe, a shot. Durlego couldn't get the rebound, and Trache straight back up at center. Got the puck into the corner. And Maloney has it. No score in the game. 14-17 and counting, remaining in the second period. Durlego, a hard shot. Smith knocked that down. Maloney centered it, but there were three Islanders in front of the net. Down now for Wayne Merrick. Bob Nystrom takes a shot and he fired it wide. How it to Merrick again. He goes down, gets it to Nystrom. Nystrom hooks it back. Here comes the shot and that is deflected off the legs. 
Abzanuzzi all the way down the ice. Stefan Pearson shooting it down the ice, too. That's going to be icing. That's the least player gets to it, and he does. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. We look at Bob Nystrom again playing of a very aggressive game. Zanuzzi of the Leafs has just gone to the Leaf dressing room. It's been that kind of a hitting game. We'll get a further report on him. He was a gentleman that made that big block there, that good second effort block, and Dennis Potvin right at the end before the uh, whistle. The puck comes back to the blue line. Melrose is shot. That's wide. The rebound to Nystrom. Nystrom tears it to the blue line. Wayne Merrick knocked it out the center ice. Goes back in. Nystrom was checked. Here's Anderson trying to get a shot. And Smith goes down and covers up. You know, John Anderson just doesn't want to shoot that puck. Again, he was in a good position to shoot it. Was going for Sittler going down the wing. And now let's hear from Dave Hodge. Butch Goring's not out there for the Islanders. The word from the Islander room is that he was slashed in the left hand and has suffered a cut. He is being uh, attended to now and is expected back on the bench and on the ice shortly. Okay, Dave, and we're all set for the face-off in the Islander zone. Settler, Anderson, and Robert. Puck comes back to the blue line. And it was shot in by Turnbull after it had been outside, and that's offside. Well, it's an intentional offside, so it'll go into the Leafs end zone. But did the Islanders look a little frustrated at this stage of the game? They do. Leafs are playing an excellent game, and, and from their standpoint, it's just too bad they haven't put something on the board because they've had a three-on-one, a two-on-one. They picked off some some passes. They've really been aggressive and really held a play, but unfortunately for them, the, the score is zero-zero, and that's really the bottom line. You know, I'm always interested to know for a goaltender, is there complete concentration? How about when the play is in the other end? Are you still concentrating, or what are you thinking about? When you really have that special concentration, you do, and it looks like Bunny has that tonight. He's really on top of his game. That's Dave Chan bringing the puck up for the Leafs. He shoots it in. That's cleared it into the corner. They go after it. And his puck fan missed it. Came off center. The puck goes into the corner as Martin was knocked down. Now here's Gillies giving it on the right side. Rini. And Gillies gets there to pick it up. Gillies of the Islanders, taken to the boards by Salmon. Well, we have a further report for Montreal, and I guess the Canadians better take the Oilers seriously. Here's Danny Gallivan. Uh, back it goes. Here's Coffey taking the shot. Leg saved by 70. Now it's back. Stilton and going in for the shot. He scores! A booming blast! By number eight, Siltonen. So Finnish star Risto Siltonen has given the Oilers a two to one lead. And of course, Wayne Gretzky was involved in the play. At center ice now, Lauren Henning. Trache is out there as well with Bossy. The puck is kept in by Bossy. He's going right in. Shoot! when you shoot the puck but the giveaway watch Shan behind the net looking to throw it up the wing and there's the interception and boy does that guy know what to do with it once he gets a hold of it Mike Bossy there he just whips that puck that was a good shot of the way Mike shoots the puck there's no telegraphing it comes off that stick and a little flick motion you don't know where it's going and Ended up in the net, unfortunately, for Toronto. Well, it's very important now for the Leafs just to keep their cool, not run around, keep their composure, and uh, perhaps that goal will certainly give the Islanders a lift. There's Bossy again, giving it over to Langevin. Langevin gets it up for Henning. Henning gave it away to Salming. Now the Islanders will try it again. Bossy 
Moving over the line. A tip pass to Trichy. Shot. And he just missed. And the Islanders are starting to open up. Here's Trichy going in. He's going. Gary doing offer when they hit, they hit fast. That's what happened last night. Let's watch the Islanders at their best. Trotje. I mean, nobody challenges them, so why not go right in front of the net? That's what he does so well. A lot of players go past him. Now watch here. Uh, Brian's going to fake the pass across to Mike Bossy, who you have to watch. And Bunny goes to poke check it. Just missed it. And Brian, who's so good around the net, just throws it in the far corner. That only took 39 seconds. Would uh, Buddy LaRock have been able to do anything, perhaps try to deflect that puck away from Trotje? Well, I think he was worried about the man in front. And I think he was looking for the pass just a little bit, but really there isn't much you can do. And the Islanders again. A quick pass over the line. A shot, and that was stopped by LaRock. Now the Leafs try to bring it out. Speed and Lormer clipped it over the board. Now the Leafs were not able to keep their composure, and the Islanders struck very fast. The Sabres have added another goal, this time Savard scoring his second of the game, 4-1. In the second period, the North Stars, that jinx is over. Maxwell and Payne in the second period have scored. McNabb has replied for Boston, but Minnesota, 5-3. to three. Yeah, they, it happens that way, though, a lot. You break that jinx, it just completely turns around for you sometimes. We had a look at Mike Nicolak. You know, he's thinking, what can this team do? we played so well for a period, and then, whoops. It's cleared into the Islanders' zone. Dan Maloney goes after it. He and Lorimer, and Lorimer beat him to it. Wayne Merrick with Nystrom. Going over with Howard. Howard was just a shade ahead of the play. You know, a lot of times we have mentioned so often the importance of that slot man. You know, when two men go into four check, of course, you're, you're trying to make contact. The first man take the man. The second man look for the loose puck. Al Arbor, he must certainly talk about that slot man. Even for a goaltender, when you're at the other end, boy, you hope that guy is back. Well, that's the whole key to forechecking, having that one guy high in the slot. And that's what uh, the Leafs were doing, but now they're down 2-0. Now they're going to be forced to kind of get away from that style a little bit and open up to try and get these two goals back. You know what happens uh, when they do that. Then they become very vulnerable for breaks against it. That's right. The puck at center ice. Zach Gillies holds it against the boards along with... Boudreaux. You know, something that is really a change has been made since we've all those European players, the crossover. I mean, the Islanders do quite a bit of that also, don't they? Oh, they do, yeah. Well, they work on it every, every practice. There's no more up and down in the lanes. And they lease with Juris. A long pass. That was stopped by Pearson. Came to Salming, who was given a bump. Rennie Robert to Settlebauer. Settlebauer gets over the line, gets his shot, and that's high and wide. Another shot ends up in the corner on this side. Settlebauer shot it around again, and it's Mike Gillies going after it. Salming beat him to it. Salming is back inside his own blue line. Shot back out to center. Settlebauer. And it's finally cleared by Juris. A pass over to... Pearson, it goes up. Marini goes into the corner after it for the Islanders. Carroll is jamming there as well. The Islanders get the puck. Comes back. There's the shot. And our Bourne just failed to deflect it. As the Leafs control the puck now, trailing 2 0. Puck was knocked down with a high stick. With the score of the Islanders 2 and Toronto nothing, this is Stanley Cup 81. Here's the New York Islanders Stanley Cup flag. Hanging from the rafters here at the Nassau Coliseum. 
Back for Dennis Petvan. To Morrow. Morrow gets it up for Bossy. Bossy at center. Takes a long shot. It bounces into the corner. Trache is being watched there by Zanuzzi. And that's where play ends. You know, something that we haven't talked about, but as the series progresses, certainly will become a factor. The first series is four games and five nights. Now, the team that can win in three straight is going to have that rest. Oh, yeah, that's right. And that's going to be a big factor because in the next series, the first two games, the first four games, there's two games back-to-back, -back, a day off, and then two more back-to-back. At least it was last year. I assume it's the same setup this year. So it can be real grueling if it goes the limit in all the series. Back up for John Anderson. Anderson's over the line. Stops. Still has it. Flipped it behind Turnbull. And he finally takes the shot. And that goes over the glass. How much pre-scouting is done by the Islanders? Uh, a lot. You know, most Especially the last month. You know. Uh, what are they normally looking at? Let's say, for instance, the Leafs. Uh, it's mostly the films, and then they get they get a pretty good idea. They know how the Leafs are going to try and check them and so forth. But it's mostly matchups, line matchups, what it gets down to. The shot is wider than that. It goes into the corner. Bob Bourne then gets it to Trache. Brian Trache comes down to his own line, up at center, pass to Bossy. Bossy's over the line. Trache. Tried to hook it loose. He's got it right in front. There's a shot. The rock is down, and they hold it out. Some anxious moments in the Leafs zone, and we have an update at Boston. McAdam has scored his second goal of the game. And the North Stars, that jinx seems to be over. Sure does, and I wonder what kind of type of series it's been. You know, they expected a real physical series. I don't know how the first game went. But uh, I would think now is the time that Boston's going to probably try and change that with some intimidation if they can. But it looks like it may be too late for that. Uh, Coach Glenn Sommer had said that if, if the Bruins want to play rough style, we will be ready for them. They obviously were. Ready to go. Wayne Merrick facing off. Chan shoots it around on the board. McEwen couldn't keep it in. Howitt has it at his own line. Over to Lorimer. Lorimer gets it up, and it's shot into the crowd. Gary Howitt, the fire plug of this hockey club, very difficult to play against. You're either going to have an elbow or a glove or a stick or something in the face. Another example that you don't have to score a lot of goals to be effective. Philadelphia Flyers. Barber has the hat trick. And Tom Gorenz has also scored. Alan Stashney has scored for the Quebec Nordiques. Their second goal. Into the corner for Terry Martin in Island Territory. Merrick. Covered by Camo. Comes out to Gary Howitt. Howitt couldn't get it out. Was Salming at him covered. It's offside though. It did go out and knocked back in again. Hockey Night in Canada will continue in a moment. We're back live and the action has just started. With 7.47 to go in the second period. And the Islanders leading 2-0. Huck ends up along the board. Eric couldn't keep it in, and it's cleared out to center ice. Now Lorimer. Over it goes to McEwen. McEwen for Nystrom. Stop by Martin. Then he, Lorimer carries on up, and they clear the puck in. Jan. Stop by Merrick. Puck goes to Gary Howard. Back to Nystrom. Nystrom took a shot. Tell me. Trying to, there's McEwen's shot, and there's another shot. And that was just wide. They back down the ice. McEwen turning for the Islanders to Nystrom. Shot it over on the wing. Islanders changing on the go. Puck is cleared. Black Gillies to Lohman. A long pass for 
Gillies, he goes racing after it. Melrose is hit hard, and here comes Elder Lego with Dan Maloney over the line. He tried to get it a vibe, he did. Smith goes down, covers up, and holds on. Five was a little upset. There could have been a penalty. Butch Goring hooked him all the way down the ice. When he got the puck, he was in a good spot to shoot. But again, Butch was hooking him, so he wasn't able to get a good enough shot away. And I think when he went by Davy Longe, and he was just frustrated, he just gave him a little whack, and Davy punched back. And I guess they're both going to get penalties. Live from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, the Stanley Cup playoffs. There's two for roughing 13-35. Well, we had two penalties. Langevin and Vive both getting penalties, one for roughing and Vive was for high sticking at 13.35. You know, it's amazing how the Islanders have shut down the Leafs in their own zone. They, I don't think they've given up a good scoring opportunity. No, there was that two-on-one and the three-on-one which originated in the Leaf end, and that's been about it. Juris to Salmi. Teams playing even. Puck goes to the corner. And Rene Robert unable to do anything with it, so Pache gives it to Dennis Patfan. Patfan just taking his time for Trache. There goes Trache, number 19, out at center. A long shot. That's back of the net. Ali Carroll went down. Now it's Lauren Henning, and he was checked but he goes right back to get it Henning's got it Henning shoots it over the side to puck back now he goes to Moe oh shot it behind there's a class in front and that's knocked down the ice and it's puck back coming up through center pass to Carroll back to puck back puck back takes a shot and Salming breaks that up and comes out of his own zone. Up to center right. Over the line. Got the puck into the corner. Carroll was given a bump. Puck comes loose and Smith is down. It goes to Henning. Henning having all kinds of difficulty. Now he turns. Still waiting for a change. And Putt fans got the puck. Butch Goring is back and on the ice. Henning gets possession, and that's what the Islanders appear to be doing out there during after. They really want to check, 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 and possess that puck. Well, when you have that 2 nothing lead, you can certainly do that. It's over the line. Turnbull trying to get through. There's a shot, and it's into the corner. Now Sittler and Turnbull. Turnbull's shot is going high over the glass. Now we look at Ken Morrow, winner of the gold and the silver last season. We will have a feature on Ken Morrow during our second intermission. And also Dave Hodge will speak to Mike Bossy, who has picked up two points in this hockey game tonight. There's Mike. Great camera work, isn't it? Great camera work. Four minutes, 22 seconds remaining to play in the second period. Islanders two, the Maple Leafs nothing. Calgary has jumped out to a one nothing lead over the Blackhawks. The goal was by Bobby McMillan. McEwen shooting it to Marini and Goring over to Clack Gillies. There's the shot. The Rock stopped that. Gillies gets the rebound. Jammed out of the play. And now the Leafs come back. Sittler, a long pass for Zanuzzi. And McEwen was there. Off the boards. Marini gives it to Goring. Going over to Gillies. And his shot was wide. Here's Marini. Trying to center it. Now the Leafs break it up. John Anderson coming down the ice. Over the line to Sittler. Back for Anderson. Too far. The puck came out in front of the net. The Islanders have it. Marini, four of them are going up. Over the line. And it's just flicked into the corner by Marini. 
so that the Islanders could change. 3.21 to go in the second period. Islanders have a 2 nothing lead. Pearson and Zanuzzi. Luck along the boards. Out at center. Boshman over to Paymall. Paymall shot. Smith went down. Played it over for Nystrom. Too hard. Juris pass for Martin and Smith leaves it there. Langevin and Pearson. It's back of the net and they get a whistle. Now what do the Leafs have to do here? They're, they're still not getting those concentrated attacks, but you'll get a chance to answer that in a second. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. And we're back live. Islanders leading by a score of two to nothing. Boshman, Martin, and Pemo. Howitt, Merrick, and Nystrom for the Islanders. That goes to the corner. Langevin cleared it around on the boards. At least trying to get a hold of it. Pimon did. Got it back of the net. Martin shot it to the blue line. There's a drive. That was stopped by Smith. It was cleared back. There's a shot by Juris right on. And Billy Smith was equal to the task. I guess that's what the Leafs have to do. Get more of a concentrated attack going. Well, they used the points well there. Two good shots from the points. And uh, maybe that's a secret. Let's... Let's have a look here. A nice shot, and Smitty leaves a rebound. And here's one thing the Leafs have had trouble doing is capitalizing on those rebounds. The first period especially, and there's another wrist shot. Smitty hangs on. But I think the Leafs just have to remember that they're down 2-0. Think in terms of one. Think of one goal. They're within one. It can happen any time to tie it up. They can't think of in terms of two or three. Well, there certainly is a lot of time left. But I thought uh, the Islanders are doing an excellent job of, of picking up that loose man so they don't get the good rebound shot. Rossi to Trucci. Trucci into the corner. There's going to be a penalty here to the Leafs. Came right in front. Oh, and Trucci shot. Down goes McEwen. It's back of the net, but there's going to be a penalty to the Maple Leafs. I guess if you're looking for a, a key part in this hockey game, it should develop right now with the Leafs having to play a man short. And only two minutes and three seconds left to go in this second period. Toronto penalty to number 21. Well, certainly, as I say, a two-goal two deficit. You score Toronto one, you're within 17, one, and it's no big deal. You get down three, especially at the end of a period, it makes it tough. Where you saw me, oh, this is just after the penalty was taken. Identical to the goal Brian scored on it. Bunny was looking for it there, and he made a good save. But Salming is all over Bobby Bourne, and so again the Islanders, who have not really had the opportunities on the power play due to the fact that the Leafs have been very aggressive in their forechecking, especially in the Islander zone. And as uh, Chico had said during our first intermission, that's where you really have to put the pressure on them, not give them a chance to set up in their own zone and come out as a unit. Trache, Bourne, Bossy. Puck is shot. Dennis Puckman knocks it down. Puckman setting it up. Drops it back. There's a shot. Oh, and right in front. Bossy goes after it and he shot it wide. Trache being watched by Turnbull. And down he goes. Play his call. Well, that'll show you something else about a Brian Trache, how he's able to have that good balance. That that was about the first time I've seen Trottier get knocked down. Tremendous upper uh, body strength, balance. Yeah, Ian Turnbull shows a lot of spunk there. That's a good sign. They're still into it. They're fighting along the boards. They're doing everything they have to. And if they could kill this penalty off, again, they're not in that bad a shape. Um, they saw a new wrinkle there on that power play. I don't know if we'll see it again, if it was just ad-libbed or if it's something Dennis and Michael has practiced. But Mike goes around and drops a puck to Denny, and he curls in and takes that shot. We see the St. Louis score. Micheletti has given the Blues a 1-0 lead. That is in the first period. 
But I like the way the Islander defensemen move in from their board position to the center ice area to give them that good angle to shoot the puck on the net. They do that constantly. One minute and 46 seconds remain in the period as the puck is shot down the ice. Helming has a 136. Now Dennis Putfan leads a four-man rush. Got it up to Treche over to Bourne. He rolled it across in front. Bossy gets it back. Pearson and then Bossy relay was deflected out to center ice. Now here comes Dennis Putfan over the line. Gives it around to Bossy. Bossy couldn't control it, and Pearson and Trache have to go back. Trache back way ahead of Pearson. Gets it to Bossy. To Pearson. Less than a minute to go. In this the second period. Clear it up to Trache. Trache over on the wing. Bossy's over the line. Bossy stops. Clears it right in front. They puck. Oh! Trache! Beautiful shot right into the top right hand corner. That combination of Brian Trotje and Mike Bossy has been dynamite. Look at the balance of Bossy. Gets knocked down, gets up, and is still able to make a perfect pass. Right on the stick of the old time wrister, Gary. Uh, Brian does that so well. He just uses that old wrist shot, and Bunny got a piece of that. But look at Brian's. Now, a great play here by Mike. And Brian maybe was going to go off the ice, but he comes flying in there and pucks right on a stick. And look, at he'll be well inside the circle here. So Bunny really doesn't have much chance. And Brian makes a good shot. You'll see it just go through the arm. And, a, and really a tough goal at this stage of the game. Another example of that man coming late and nobody picking him up. Everybody's attracted by the puck instead of looking around to see where's that loose man. Who's the most dangerous man out there? Can I get a hold of him? Trotje right. in the clear, and you saw the damage that that guy can do. So we have 37 seconds remaining in the second period. Three to nothing as Smith stopped that. McEwen flipping it to the blue line and out. Salming gets it back to Juris. Juris at his own line. Salming, he's knocked down. He goes right out. Robert. Over to Salming. He just chopped it out the center ice for 12 seconds. Lorimer up for Nystrom. Nystrom pokes into the corner. Seven seconds. Juris comes up for the lead. Up to center ice. And the horn goes to end the second period. And so the score at the end of the second period. Scoreboard again. Edmonton still ahead of Montreal. That's now in the third period. Buffalo. Lindy Ruff has scored that fifth goal. That game seems to be well in hand. And the Flyers ahead 5-3. to three. Jacques Richard has narrowed that one. Bobby McMillan given the Calgary Flames that 1-0 lead in the first period. And Minnesota North Stars. That game is now in the third period. See him on the way to victory. St. Louis Blues on a goal by Micheletti lead the Penguins one to nothing, and the game out in the coast hasn't started as of yet. Kiko, and also Bossy has three goals. Trotchy has four goals. I mean, the Leafs have to do something about those two guys. Well, I think a good example is tonight, Gary. Let's face it. You take those two guys away, even just take that one shift away when those two guys kind of went uh, uh, wild. I mean, it's a 0-0 game, and, and the Leafs are controlling it. That's that's just been the whole key. And I just think, uh, Mike, maybe he will when he gets home. I still think, I know you've got Bossy, and you've got Bourne, and you've got other talent, but I think you still try and stop Trache because he's still the key there. And I think it's just, you know, those statistics prove that out. Well, it's very interesting. Uh, both the guys had good regular season performance. And what's to stop them from having a playoff performance? I mean, if they had a good season, no reason to not keep going in the playoffs. And that's why you have to pay special attention to those guys. Play underway now as the Islanders bring it up. Gillies missed it. Carroll's got it. Carroll of the Islanders gets over the red line, shoots the puck in, and ends up back of the net. The Rock, a little slow in clearing it. And they get a whistle against the boards. So you have Carroll at center with Gillies. 
look at Clark Gillies. Him and Barry Melrose have really gone after each other tonight, and I got to give Barry Melrose a lot of credit. He stuck his nose in there every time Clark's come down that wing in front of the net. He's been fighting them, and uh, they've had a little duel going all night. It comes back to Gillies. Gillies took a shot, and he just missed. It goes to Dan Maloney. Maloney out to Durlego. A long shot. That's off the glass. Gillies. Took his man out. The puck comes out to Carroll. Carroll is checked. Dan Maloney shot it in offside. Well, being down three goals, you certainly expect the Leafs to really pour it on. And, and you can't hold up now. You know, try to keep the score down. Do some good job for checking and get some shots on that. I think the Leafs uh, could maybe dump it in a little bit. The Islanders are coming back. They're standing up. Put a little pressure on the Islander defense. Let's see how they react. It's important, though, when you dump it in that, that those forwards are going at full tilt. Then they can cause the Islanders a lot of trouble back there. Lauren Henning with Nystrom and Howitt. Lorimer brings the puck up for the Islanders. Number four, he was checked. Now McEwen, number 16, shoots it wide. Stop the board. Melrose was checked. Five hit the side of the net. Cleared to the blue line, but not out. McEwen kept it in. Melrose was stopped by Henning. Henning goes to the boards with Melrose. And they get a whistle. You know, when you're missing the likes of a Tonelli and a Keller from your lineup, both guys can score goals and play very effectively, and all of a sudden you move in a Marini and a Carroll and do a job. That tells you something of the balance that the Islanders have. That's right, and the key really last year in the playoffs was Dwayne Sutter, and we haven't even seen him yet. He's been out with an injury. And let's face it, any terrific team has terrific bench strength, and that's what the Islanders have. Well, here's the threesome out here. Trache, Bossy, and Bourne goes into the corners. Salming cleared it out. Dennis Papin hit Bourne on the skate. It goes sliding back down into Islander territory. New York Islanders leading by a score of three to nothing, and we're in the third period. Mike Bossy just content to shoot the puck in. Barack stopped it there. Came out in front. Anderson, the pass for Zanuzzi too far. And Dennis Patvan just shoots it down the ice. That's over the red line. It'll be touched by Juris, and that's icing. Juris, one of the defense that has felt the brunt of the Islanders for checking, playing in his first Stanley Cup series, and I wonder what his impressions will be after this year is over. You think he'll be able to go back and tell his friends? <laughs> yeah. Errol Sittler, number 27. Well, the Mike Nicolak has still remained with that unit. Sittler, Anderson, and Zanuzzi taking Sittler away from Paymont Martin. Okay, Gary, and the puck's out in front. Over around to the far side. Bossy sits it out to Trotsky. Going down with Bourne. Pass to Bourne. He shoots. And the Rock just got a piece of it. Now Selman. He stopped. The puck goes to Trotsky to... There's a drive by Bossy. Bossy gets it into the other corner. Bache to Bossy. Centered it for Dennis Patvan and the Leafs said the puck. Zanussi getting it to Anderson. Anderson takes the shot. Hit the goal post. Play is called. And there's going to be an interference penalty. At John Anderson, Gary Dornhofer, and Chico West, they right off the post. Islanders Breaks continue to go against the Leafs here again. A nice play by John Anderson and any kind of break and they would be back in this hockey game. From the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, this is Stanley Cup 81. Back live here at Nassau Coliseum. Puck goes to Robert, at least for the man advantage. There's a shot by Turnbull. Wait on another try. And the Lego had the open net and he couldn't put it in. Long shot by Carroll. Rock made the save on that. Maloney coming to center right. Carroll goes after him and checks him. Now the Leafs have to regroup again. Robert 
Pass over to Vive. Number 22 to Turnbull number two. Turnbull now over the line. He's trailing by three and have a man advantage. Puck is cleared right to Carroll and Carroll gets it out. Play is called and we're going to have a penalty here and it's going to Vive. Well, that'll take care of the power play for the Leafs, but Ricky Vive retaliating a slashing penalty. Against Davey Longevin, who, if you remember, mixed it. They were mixing it up behind the net. And uh, it was a good hit by Davey that time, but Rick a little frustrated. You know, a lot of times a shot that looks to be very harmless will fool a goaltender. Watch this one. Well, see there, you know, the, the forward, Anderson is moving across the ice. He's not trying to come straight in on the goalie, and Wayne Gretzky does that better than anyone. He wants to move in a lateral position across the goal rather than straight at it, and that changes the whole complexion of the shot. And here the Leafs again with an open net and just can't connect. It's been that kind of a series. Ricky Vive and then Durlego. I mean, you can't get a better position. Hits the side of the net. Tough break. Over the line for Martin. Martin of the Leafs back to Borja Salming. Salming over for Juris. The Islanders can't get it out. Juris trying to get his shot away. Here comes Salming into a maze, and that was high. Clear it out. The Islanders flip it out. And here's a race for the puck. Gary Howitt over the line. Howitt stops. Goes back to McHugh on a shot, and the line stopped that. Martin coming to center ice for the Leafs. For Pemo. Pemo stops. Pemo has it on the line, and he was checked, and Lorimer brings it out. Lorimer over the line. Lorimer trying to go in right in front of the net to the shot, and how it missed the rebound. McEwen, there's the shot, the lock stopped that. Salming back of the net. Islander changing on the go. 15-43 in the third period. 3-0 Islander. That was wide. Comes out in front, fist falls out and covers up. Bobby Bourne's penalty is over. You know, balance is such an important ingredient for a goaltender. How do you keep your balance? I don't always, Gary. <laughs> you don't always. Mentally or physically. Well, they're having a shootout in Boston. Cicerelli and Maxwell in the third period. Crowder has two goals, eight to six. No, but is there something that you can do to, uh, you know, just keep that balance for a goaltender, the way you position your pads or the crouch that you're in? Sure, sure, but a lot of hard work. Ballet down, lessons. Down the ice for Bossy, a shot. Oh, and that was just wide. Puck is stolen by Trucci. Trucci goes back. There's a screenshot. That was knocked down. And Lori Boschman brings it out to center right. Trying to go around Langevin, and it's Bobby Bourne getting it over to Wink, over the line, and Bossy was knocked out. That's going down the ice. There will be no icing. Dennis Puckban up to Bossy. Bossy goes to the far side, and that is offside. Clark Gillies on this left wing. Rick Vibe, one second left to go in his penalty. Ballet lessons? Well, I've heard of that, but really, Gary, the secret is is to fight for young goalies. There's a natural tendency to want to go down on the ice. And so what a young goalie has to do or a young or a coach teaching a young boy is to teach him to play the game on his feet. So it's it's like from when you're young, it's just automatic to stay on those feet and think balance rather than think sprawl, think going down on your knees. And it's just a lot of self-discipline because, again, the natural tendency is to go down on the ice. Thank you. That's the answer I was looking for. <laughs> Mike Nicola must be concerned at this stage. The Leafs have tried, but that explosive power of the Islanders is, again, very evident. And the Islanders have the man advantage for just one second. 14.49 now to go in the third period. Islanders three, the Maple Leafs, nothing. Puck is shot down the ice. Over the red line, and that is icing. 
Would you say it's a goaltender's responsibility to be the real hauler guy out there? I mean, he can see the guys that are chasing his defensemen. Do you alert them that somebody's on them and things like that? Is there a lot of communication? There should be. Uh, the, the thing is, especially in a game like Smitty's played where he hasn't had a lot of work, that is really one of his responsibilities. Is, and same thing with Bunny, although a lot of times you're so involved in the play you don't have a chance to yell, and I'm sure Bunny's ran into that tonight. Back of the net for Milrose. Gets it over Turnbull. Got it up to center ice. Broken up by Lorimer. And to McEwen. McEwen rushing to center ice. He gets over the line. Tries a pass right in front and then it hopped over the stick. Up number 29, Hector Marini. Now the Islanders shoot it right back in again. This time after it is Carroll. Carroll to Marini. Marini goes back to McEwen. There's a shot. That was knocked down in front. And the Leafs come back. Settle power. A pass over to Rene Robert. Robert takes his shot right over to Settle power. Another whack at the door. And it's three to one. Was that Bruder that scored the goal? Did yep. not play last night. Back in the lineup and scores his first playoff goal. But the Leafs. Watch Robert now, gets possession. Nobody challenges him, so he has a lot of time to make a play. The fan shot it in Boudreaux, left unprotected, keeps whacking away at it. And again, it looks like an Islander put the puck in his own net, McEwen. Definitely, Mike McEwen here, actually inadvertently trying to, to uh, clear it. You'll see him actually put the puck through, and it's finally a break for the Leafs. Hopefully for them, it's going to spark them. Here he's trying to play it right through Smitty's legs into the goal. Biff clears the puck off to the side as the Leafs move up again. Now the Islanders, unable to get out. His first game. It goes to Wayne Merrick and shot it down the ice. Boudreau gets credit for the goal. The Leafs come back again. And that shot was blocked. Islanders now get it out to center right. Harry Howard shot it over for Nystrom on the right side. Nystrom. Has it in the corner. Nice from trying to center it. He did the pat fan. Pat fan shot in five. Morrow to pat fan. He shoots it right back in again. 13 minutes remaining in the third period. Three to one the score. Favor the Islanders. Algevin shot it back into Leaf territory. Melrose shoots it out. And Anderson offside. At the blue line. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Back live at the Nassau Coliseum. Henning at center. Cache is playing on the left wing and Bossy on the right. Rita won the score in favor of the Islanders. A pass up to Trache. Trache nearly put Bossy into the clear. Bossy then goes to Trache. Trache's pass for Henning went over his stick. Ian Turnbull. Then that was stopped by Bossy. Bossy was down on the ice. Puck came out. Shot back in again offside. I had a laugh at Lauren Henning. We were talking the other day. It was a look at Mike Bossy. He uh, played the last game of the season with uh, Trotchy and Bossy, and he said, here I, I turned a high-scoring unit into a checking line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think Brian was so nice even let Lorne play his position at center. And I guess they were laughing so hard watching Lauren that they couldn't handle the puck. Lauren hadn't played in about a month and a half. But he's been very valuable to this hockey club as an assistant coach, sending down information between periods. Juris with a shot. That's going to go up into the crowd and we'll get a whistle. Uh, Gary, Lauren's one of those players that uh, doesn't have to play a lot to be in shape. And that's kind of what, what he does. He plays a lot of tennis and he can sit out for a month and a half and still look good. Well, it was a high scoring affair. Timmy Young scored the final goal. And so the North Star is something they haven't been able to do since their uh, National Hockey League debut have finally won and twice back-to-back -back games in Boston Garden. 
Langevin leaves it for Henning. Henning around on the boards. Knocked down in front. Harrison couldn't get it out. Langevin will try it again. He's knocked over. Sittler goes after it. He's checked. Pache trying to get it out. Kept in by the lease. And Sittler was knocked down hard. Puck goes around to Bossy. That stopped the shot. And that rolled over top of the net. Off the glove of Billy Smith. Now then Henning into the corner. Pearson for Bossy. And the Leafs keep that puck in there. Finally it goes to Trache. Trache rams it down the ice. And that's icing. A good example of what good forechecking will do. It doesn't matter who the defensemen are out there. This is Hockey Night in Canada from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island. Now we're back here at the Nassau Coliseum as we get ready for this faceoff. Bill, another tough break for the Leafs there. A deflection hit Billy Smith and hit the top of the net by Zanuzzi. Comes back to Melrose. His shot. He gets another try. He was taken out of the play. Marini couldn't get it out. There's a shot by Turnbull. It's out in front of the net. Another shot. And they pile up and hold it out. But the Leafs are doing everything. Let's get back into this game. You have to admire the Leafs spunk. They've certainly come out in the third period and putting on some pressure. That's that's right, Gary. Here we're going to see the shot from the point. This is Smitty makes one save, and there again, the Leaf player wasn't able to get the puck up, but they're getting their chances and they're really taking over. And there's 10 minutes, almost 11 minutes left. So this is really, I think, the best the Leafs have looked in the whole series. It's encouraging. Forcing the opposition into mistakes. You do that strong forward checking, and all you can do is fire that puck along the boards, and that's when your defensemen play such a big part to be able to pinch in and intercept those passes. Ready to go for the faceoff. Paymall wins the draw, gets it to Melrose. Here's the shot. Smith stopped that. The rebound is cleared by the Islanders. Down the ice, there's a race for it. Murray goes after it. The rock goes to Ian Turnbull. Turnbull lost it. There's right in front. Oh, oh, oh. rock stopped that. There's a miss. Goes the kill. What a bad break. What a bad break for Bunny and the Leafs. Well, again, it was that time a giveaway by Turnbull. Watch him in his own zone. Loses the puck. But what a save here. Oh, great save by Bunny here. And, and then again, the Leafs had possession of the puck there, didn't they? Yeah, and they threw it back to the point. Oh, unfortunately, Barry Melrose trying to clear it. Didn't get good wood on it. Just laid it up there for Mike McEwen, and he really teed off on it. As you saw, Bunny was just recovering. And boy, what a bad break. But, you know, it was bad enough that the Leafs made a miscue the first time, but then when they coughed it up a second time, the Islanders were able to get possession of that puck with McEwen. Well, there's a save that could turn the game around if they come out of this. But again, there's a second mistake. And, you well, know. a good example, Chico, what you were talking about when you make a save and you're flat on your back. You know, he was trying desperately, LaRock, to get back on his feet. Didn't quite make it. McEwen from his point position. And that's another area that, you know, the winger has to, you know, make contact with McEwen there and can't let him get that shot away. But he let it fly. Boy, he had wood on that one. Islanders four and the Maple Leafs one. Puck out at center ice. Carroll going down over the line with Gillies. Trying to kick it loose up along the boards and they get a whistle. Well, the Leafs now are really going to have to try and hang in here. They were really coming on at a two or three good chances. Actually, for a two-minute period there, the Islanders couldn't get out of their end. They were running around and really reeling. And then again, just an example of coming down once and scoring a goal and changing the whole complexion of the game. Selming a pass to Boudreaux. Boudreaux's pass for Settlebauer. He was hit by Potvin. Carroll with Gillies. Gillies trying to pull his way through. He's knocked down. That goes to Juris. Juris, a pass ahead. And it's Robert, number 14, over the line. Robert tries a pass and 
Pat Fan intercepts, shooting it down. The Rock over to Salming. Salming coming to center ice. Over the line. Salming takes a weak shot, and Boudreau and Ernie get in behind the Island defense. But the Islanders bring it back out again. That's Bourne to Trache. Trache in for Bossy. Bossy roll right in front of the net. And Laroque comes out, covers up. of the New York Islanders, asking all you Ontario viewers to join us for game number three of the Toronto Maple Leafs New York Islanders series. For the people in BC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and the Maritimes, you'll be enjoying game number three of the Buffalo Sabres against the Vancouver Canucks. Join us. Well, we're back live as the puck goes into the corner in Leaf territory. Back of the net for Turnbull. Turnbull for Vive. He couldn't get anywhere. Bourne to Pearson to Bossy. Goes back as the Islanders regroup. Now it's Trecce over the line. Trecce stick handles right through. Goes in back of the net. Two beautiful moves by Ryan Trecce. 8.54 remaining in the third period. It goes to the corner. Bossy against the board. It's tipped out to center ice. Picked off there by Juris. Juris takes a shot. Smith was not, almost knocked down. It, he didn't see it to the last second. Now then, Gary Howitt. He's over the line. He shot it in for Merrick. Merrick gets the puck loose. Nystrom is out in front. There it's back to Lorimer, he shot it high. Merrick again with it, Nystrom. Back it comes to McEwen. There's a shot wide. Howitt goes into the corner to get it. Harry Howitt being watched by Anderson. They fall together, it comes out. And Zanussi cleared it over the line and the Islanders just clear it out again and it's offside. With the... With the score, it's the Islanders 4, Toronto 1. This is Stanley Cup 81. There you see the score. Islanders 4, Toronto 1, third period. 7.59 remaining. A shot wide of the net. Howitt. Alexa to get it out to center ice to Wayne Merrick. Merrick going down with Nystrom. They're closing in together. Right in front. And Nystrom's backhand went over top of the net. Back for Sittler. A pass too far for Zanuzzi. And Zanuzzi stole the puck. Gets his shot. And that was stopped by Smith. On a giveaway by McEwen. Laura murder to McEwen. McEwen ahead to Merrick. Merrick's long shot off the boards. Nystrom went after it. Leafs come up with it. And Juris feeds it out to center ice. At Salming, not able to get anywhere. It's over the line, and it's going to be icing call against the Islanders. You know, I thought particularly you made a, a real good point before about the Leafs defense. Whenever Trottier's line is out there, you can't get fancy. You know, hang on to it and dump it out. But, you know, you try those rink-wide passes, little drop pass, you can't do that against Trottier's line. No, and, let, and that one shift they had where there were two mis defensive mistakes turned the whole game around. And that's the type of line they are. You can keep them off the scoreboard, you know, for a period, period and a half. But when they're out there, keep it basic. Just keep the puck away from them. Don't get yourself into trouble with those guys out there. Puck rolls down into Leaf Territory. It's Ian Turnbull. Turnbull nearly gave it away again. Puck into the corner. Up to the blue line. Gillies trapped that. Carroll tried to center it. Gillies goes after the puck. Carroll's against the boards. And the Leafs with Tamal getting it ahead. Laurie Boschman, too well covered by Dennis Patvan. Morrow to Gillies. Out to center ice. Carroll... Going down, they go to the boards, 
fighting for it. Marini. And they get a whistle with 6.24. Hockey night in Canada will continue in a moment. And there you see Bruce Boudreaux, who scored the only goal for the Maple Leafs. Islanders, a 4-1 lead. That shot right on left. Stay back, score! Brian Treche, and that's the hat trick. It sure is. And from the face-off, the importance of those draws. Let's watch Treche, one of the best. But you notice... Trotje goes right for the net. Nobody picks him up and stops home the rebound. Mike Bossy helps out here on the faceoff. The puck's in the feet. Mike here takes the shot. A good save by Bunny again. And Brian, as you say, I don't know. I think uh, Juris moved up to help the centerman, Boudreaux, after the puck was bouncing around. And he was Brian's responsibility. But Brian has that uh, nose for the net. Well, there are all the hats on the ice. That's signifying a hat trick for Brian Trotje. But you see two Leaf players skate past Bossy, fishing for the puck, rather than really taking him, trying to knock him down. And Bossy able to gain control. Trotje on the rebound. And that's certainly been the, the story of this, not only the first game, but also this game. Trotje and Bossy, the Leafs have not been able to shut those guys down. On the other hand, the Islanders, the top two Leaf scorers, and Paymont Sittler have still not scored a goal. When the Leafs beat us a couple of years ago, it was it was just that. I, I don't know. I know Boudreaux had a lot to do with stopping Brian, and that's what they did best. And they get home Saturday night. That is what they're going to have to key on. A pass for Bourne and to Bossy. Juris off the glass. Bourne knocked it in back of the net. Goes to the blue line. Out to center ice. Islanders shoot it right back over Bossy. Trache goes after the puck. Goes along the boards. Over to Settlebauer. Back to Juris. Juris takes his shot, and that was wide. Rebound coming to Melrose. Melrose shot, and Trotje's got a breakaway. He's going in alone, all the way. Shoots! Oh, and Bunny Lorac beat him as Trotje was in alone. It's over the line for Settlebauer, and his shot was wide. Came out in front. Gary Hallett for Nystrom. Intercepted by Shad. He handed it to Lorimer. Lorimer to Nystrom. Nystrom tried to cut in front of the defense. Played around back of the net. He's have it in the corner. And Howard is there. Now it goes to McEwen. A shot. And he just missed. Settlebauer from the other wing. A shot up here for Bive. Bive's over the line. With Derlego. That's broken up, and the Islanders take over Lorimer. Over to Nystrom. Nystrom flips the puck down the ice. There's a race for it. Gary Howard and Bunny. And Howard went over the top of Bunny LaRock. Live from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, the Stanley Cup playoffs. You see Bunny LaRock sprawled on the ice. Trainer out there having a look at him, but there's quite a collision with Gary Howard and LaRock both racing for the puck. You'll see Gary here now. Try and jump over. Watch his toes of his skate is going to catch. Oh, excuse me. It was his knee. And you'll see right in the kidney region where, of course, the chest protector covers the front and a little bit of the side, but nothing in the back. And that's something that you really don't know about till later because if he's done, if he's hit that kidney area, you know, it's something that'll show up later, but that's got to hurt. He's really had a fine, fine game tonight. He's made some outstanding saves. Just stopped Brian Trotje on a breakaway, and uh, he's leaving, and I think that's the best thing because you just got to you got to watch that real close, Gary, something like that that's an internal injury. Well, we've got another report from the forum in Montreal where the Oilers are trying to make history. Let's hear from Danny Gallivan. The Edmontonians rise for our shot and Napier. 
Robinson couldn't get anywhere on the right wing. Now here's Curry got to get right going right in the goal. Good score! And the Oilers lead three to one. A young pesky Oiler hockey club, Yari Curry. Again from Gretzky and Callaghan. That's a three to one score now in Montreal. And that Oiler team may surprise a lot of the experts. The interesting thing is the players were talking. I know the fans were probably wondering too. You know they can score. They've got Gretzky. They've uh, they got Curry. They got a defense core that really likes to charge the other team's net. But could they play defense, especially in the Montreal Forum? Well, they've just proven that. So if they can play that type of defense in Montreal, they're going to be heard from. New goaltender, Harry Serra. Well, now we just want to take you to a Montreal form and have a report. Anderson shoots and it's going, going, and it is wide. Gretzky is down there. Cleared it behind the net. Just 20 seconds remaining. Three to one for Edmonton. Haney shooting it in. On there, trying to get it. Fogelin along the board. Here's Axton, tied up by Anderson. Anderson comes in to get it. Gives it to Gretzky. He shoots, and he missed on the other side. That's going to be the hockey game. And the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, Gary, and put the back of the net in Islander territory. Shot out on the left wing. Carroll losing to Zanussi. Anderson couldn't get anywhere. Carroll over to Greeny. Shot out to center ice. Carroll again. Trying to get Marini loose on the right wing. Now then Dennis Potfan shoots the puck in. Goes to the corner right across the goal mount. Zanussi. Shooting it down and Dennis Potfan. Right on Zanussi's stick but moving in there to try and get it loose. And they can't. It's against the boards for a face off. Been one of those nights again for the Leafs. They played such a solid first period. And the explosiveness of the Islanders, but again, Trachi and Bosse doing all the damage. And I'm sure Coach Mike Nikoluk will have a few tricks up his sleeve. I'm sure he's thinking about how do you stop those two guys. Salming drives the puck in wide of the net. That's been Pearson, number seven. Ahead to Bob Bourne. Bourne going down the ice. A quick pass. Bossy moves in. Bossy goes back to the net. Bossy trying to get it in front. Oh, and he passed it down the ice. Pearson goes after it. Chopped at it. There's going to be a penalty here. Stefan Pearson for slashing. Two minutes left. It may not mean much, but it is important that maybe Toronto can get their power play going a little bit here. Here is the, you talk about chopping wood here. And that isn't the slash, though, now. You're going to see it here if they keep it going. Island He's going to turn around and seven. went Step one on way first. with a stick and then the other. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that was, that was a pretty obvious Pearson call. For slashing, 17, yeah, I don't think uh, Pearson can argue about that one. Ooh, he didn't get him one way, he was going to get him the other. But the officiating in both of these games have been of the excellent variety. The, I don't think both uh, either team can complain about the officiating. So the Leafs, with 2.08 left, will have a power play. Larimer has the puck for the Islanders. He shoots it down the ice. Gary Serha to Turnbull. Comes back up to Daryl Sittler. Sittler's over the line. Onto the left side. Settlebauer is shot. And Sittler couldn't convert it. Now here's a break. And going down at center ice was Carroll. He was dumped. Islanders are 
asking Gary for a penalty shot. Well, Warren Henning went right over to Dave Newell and said, I think there should have been a penalty shot on that play. I wouldn't mind seeing one right about now. No, I don't, I don't think uh, Sirha would agree with you, Yuri, but here's Smitty. Now, this is what I talk about. He covers the ice low. He goes down a lot. You've got to get the puck up on him. Here, Lauren, he flips it out, and it goes through everybody here. It's bouncing a settled garage, tries to get it, and then he's got to trip him. It's a good penalty, and... Uh, it could have been a, it could have been a, uh, yeah, that was a shot. good penalty by Settle Bauer, but again, the Leafs with a chance just can't get the puck over a sprawled Smith, and that's something that uh, they certainly have to think about and do. Harrell shoots the puck down into Leaf territory. Melrose, number 26, clears it, but not out. It went to Lorimer, and rolling over his stick, he goes back into his own zone. Back to McEwen. Pass over to McEwen again. McEwen coming up through center. Over the line. Takes his shot and he shot it wide. Last minute of play in the period. Final minute. We're into the final minute of the third period. Henning has the puck. And he couldn't get a shot. Paymon coming back for the Leafs. 5-1. Islanders lead. Dennis Patfan breaks it up. Going up with Merritt. Merritt takes the pass. He's trying to cut in. Does. Went too far. Sirha made the save. And it goes to Melrose. Melrose with 33 seconds. It comes out to center right. Zanussi over the line. Checked by Dennis Patfan. 26 seconds. Morrow coming to center right. He flips it in. Goes to Gloria Salming. Salming is hit. Again, it's... Nystrom covering and Bashman comes back. Bashman with 11 seconds and counting. Over here on the wing for Pearson. One second. The horn goes. The game is over. Islanders have defeated the Toronto Maple Police for the second night in a row by a score of 5 to 1. Now back to the drawing board for the Maple Leafs. Tomorrow will be a travel day. Have a chance to have a practice, work on some things, and try to get the rock back together again. And uh, Mike Nicklick will have the last change, which is really going to be important. We've talked about it all in both games, but Mike has to come up with some way that he can stymie Mike and Brian, Bo Mike Bossy and Brian Trotsche a little bit. So that's something they really got to concentrate on. But I know that it has to be very disappointing for the Leafs. They had their scoring chances, just not able to connect and deposit that puck in the net. This is Stanley Cup 81 from the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island.